Welcome, today I'm gonna to take you through a full body foam roll follow along routine with stretches. All you need is a foam roller and a mat for this. You can do this pre or post workout or just any day as an off day to help your recovery and your flexibility. Let's go. So we're gonna start things off working up the back of your body. We'll then move on to the front before finishing with some stretches. Let's get started with a Soleus roll. So put the foam roller on the lower part of your leg, you can support with the other leg, lift and just roll. Try not to avoid the sore spots. And if you can't feel anything, then hook one foot over and then put more pressure on like that. We're gonna focus on the lower part of your leg, so don't come up onto your calf yet. Your soleus is really important for squat mobility, probably more important than your calf. It's more likely to be the restriction in your ankles than your calves are due to where it attaches on your leg. I'm feeling a sore spot here just down the inside so I'm going to focus there to so find those tight areas and stick around there with some smaller high pressure movements. All right let's move on to the other side so I'm just going to go to the other side now. So focusing just on that lower part of the calf. If you want that extra pressure, one foot over the other. Not shying away from any of the sore spots. Oh. This one's good for helping your ankle mobility. All right, if you're a runner, this next one might hurt. We're gonna come a little bit higher up. We're gonna work on this upper part on your calf now. So again, you can do one leg assisted, taking some pressure off, or you can do double. Try pointing out, see how it feels. Try pointing in. Try and find those slightly sore areas. We're trying to free the connective tissue up. It's called myofascial release. We're also pushing the blood around, helping blood flow, which should improve recovery. Let's switch it to the other side. pressure on. So I'm feeling something a bit more down the outside there so I'm just going to stick around there but you find where it feels best for you. You don't want to roll over any joints, you want to stay around the body of the muscle. Alright let's work up now. It's going to be a little tricky with a soft roller to get this. But we're going to try and do your hamstrings. So you can roll it like this. Now I can feel my hamstrings, I can feel it because I've been working them. So it's pretty easy to get it in the right spot. If you find that you're not feeling much, try putting pressure on. Or even if you turn your foot in, usually high up and in for me. Everyone's got a thicker fat layer on the back of their legs. So to get into the deep body of the muscle can be a bit more challenging, but it's worth doing. Even for the increased blood flow, it's worth hitting those hamstrings. Okay, let's take it to the other side. So I like to try and point in, come quite high up there, almost hitting my adductors a little bit. Oh, I can feel this today. don't even need the two feet. Okay, this is one of my favorites now. We're gonna come onto your piriformis. Your piriformis is a muscle that comes from the top of this long bone, your femur, up into your lower back. So you can imagine if that's tight, it can cause some pressure on your lower back. So we're gonna take the left leg, I'm gonna cross it over my right leg. I'm gonna lean down to that left side and hold onto the shoe with my right hand. And I'm going to roll where my upper left back pocket would be if I was wearing some jeans. 
and trying to find a small tender spot just crossing across your hips. Don't shy away from it. If I do this regularly, I actually struggle to find where it is, but I know where it is. But if I haven't done it for a while, it feels really good. So we're internally rotating this leg. It just helps to get that piriformis. Just play around with your angles, maybe a bit higher, a bit sideways, just finding those sore areas where the connective tissue is kind of crisscrossing over each other and needs releasing. Okay, let's take it to the other side. So I'm gonna take my right leg over my left leg. I'm gonna drop the right knee down, left hand on my shoelaces, I'm gonna roll right upper pocket area. Let's take it onto the lower back. I want you to be careful with your lower back. Um, we don't want to arch over the roller, so don't do that. Keep your core engaged, your glutes tucked under. And if you've got disc issues, maybe skip this and just do your upper back straight away now. So I'm gonna tuck my glutes under, slight pelvic tilt, keeping my abs engaged. And then I can just roll the lower back muscles without overextending the spine. Lifting the hips. This feels really good. If you're doing it right, you can try leaning down to one side a little. And then the other side. Okay, we're gonna take it a bit higher now. I'm gonna bring the roller between my shoulder blades, wrap my arms around. Oh, feel a few cracks, feels good. Opening that up, put back out. Especially if you've been sitting at a desk or in a car for a long time. Oh, you can go quite high up. Don't, probably don't roll onto your neck. It'll be a bit too much pressure with your whole weight resting on that neck, but you can come quite high up your back. Try wrapping your arms the other way. This one feels good. All right, we're gonna do something similar, but we're gonna come onto one side now. I'm gonna do the lats. So I'm gonna put my arm up like this, and just rolling down that long muscle, running down the side of your body, hitting those lats. Oh, can be sore when you come up high like this. Keeping your lats nice and mobile really important for overhead mobility so if you're holding a kettlebell overhead or barbell overhead squats those lats can be a big problem if they're too tight all right let's take it to the other side Okay, I'm gonna do your delts now. I wasn't sure whether to put this front or back. It wraps all the way around, so we'll do it now. So I'm gonna lie on my side, your delts to your shoulders. And what all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rock sideways like that, just rolling my shoulders and hitting the mid to rear delt right now. If I wanna put some more pressure, I'll just lift this hip off. You can feel it a bit on that mid delt here. even come around the front a little bit. It's just a small movement. All right, let's take it to the other side. You can 
bring it around the front a bit if you want. I find the front delt is easier to do with a hockey ball or a small myofascial release ball. So we're not gonna do the front of your shoulders today because I think it's best done with a different implement. But the side, you can get some pressure on those mid, mid delts like this. That feels pretty good. Okay, so we've done your posterior chain up the back. Let's go to the front. We're actually gonna roll your tibialis anterior shin muscles here. This is a good one to prevent shin splints. So we're gonna put one foot on, maybe take a bit of pressure off. And we're rolling that kind of outer shin muscle. You don't need to roll on your shin bone. You should be focusing on that fleshy part on the outside on the front. You could hook over, get some more pressure. Oh, that feels pretty good. Like I said, this is a good shin splints fix or prevention. Oh, let's take it to the other side. Okay, moving up now, bring it up the leg to your quads. You're gonna come into a plank position with the roller on your quads. Try not to dip your back into an arch, so keep a slightly engaged core. Just rolling back and forth. Try putting your legs a little wider. If you've got a long roller, turn your toes away from one another, hitting down those inside of the quads. And then if you want it a bit more intense, you can hook one leg over the bottom, doesn't matter which side, and just focus on one side for a little bit. Hitting down the outside of a quad a little bit more. Let's take it. Shifting the pressure onto the other side if you can cope with it. If not, just carry on rolling with both. Okay, next up, I'm gonna turn my roller this way around. I'm gonna put it just on the outside of my mat. I'm gonna take this knee, my right knee, I'm gonna put it on the roller, I'm gonna roll laterally out to the side, down the inside of my leg. You can take your left knee off the floor, or you can even leave that left side on the floor and just kind of rock your body sideways like this. Doesn't matter if you're up high or down by the knee, it's all good. Let's take it to the other side. I'm going to turn the roller again. This time I'm going to focus up on your hip flexors here. So anything underneath that hip bone and probably up just above where the main part of your quad is. So I'm going to have the roller slightly offset to one side. I'm just going to focus up and around that hip. Just trying to find some tender spots. All right, let's take it over to the other side. Still focusing on the hip, 
the hip flexors. All right, one that I missed out from the posterior chain is the triceps. So let's get that done now before we move on to the stretches. So just up the back of the arm. I can keep lying on the floor for this. I don't need my whole body weight. I'm even assisting taking some pressure off with this hand helping roll the roller. Well, that's a sore one. Try doing it with your hand behind your head for a bit. It gives a bit bigger stretch on that tricep. Hitting the outer heads. And then you can come down the inside as well. This one feels good. Stretching out. Okay, let's take it to the other side. Starting with the arms straight. Working outer and then rolling, keep going, rolling towards the inner. Oh, I saw down there. Let's take that tricep into a stretch position. So that's the foam roll section complete. Let's move on to some stretches now. So we're just gonna do some of my favorite and what I think are the most important stretches. I'm gonna start off with the hip flexors. So we can come into a kneeling position. We need to do a pelvic tilt and then just lean slightly forward. So we're not looking to arch, so a pelvic tilt, lean into it until you can feel a stretch shooting down here. That glute engagement on the back leg is really important. If you want, you can take that foot. Might even use this for a little bit of balance. And again, drawing the ribs in, trying not to overarch your lower back. If you need a cushion under that knee to make it a bit more comfortable, go grab a cushion. You can always pause the video. Let's see how flexible I'm feeling. So you could go for two hands, still drawing the abs in, squeezing the glute. Just hold in, just slow your breathing down. So just breathing in and then a nice long exhale as you relax in. So you breathe in and then as you breathe out, you can just sink into that stretch a little bit deeper. All right, let's take it to the other side. We're doing about 45 to 60 seconds per side. So you can start off just with a pelvic tilt and a lean. That might be far enough for you. Just engaging that glute and leaning, you can get the stretch. Don't worry about grabbing the leg. But if you're feeling good, you can grab it, pulling the heel towards the bum, engaging the glute, drawing the ribs in. Grabbing with both, it's a little bit of a shoulder stretch for me, this as well. And then we can just start slowing the breathing down. One more breath. All right, we're gonna move onto your back now. This is one of my least flexible ones, but it needs doing. We're gonna do your glute and your piriformis. So I'm gonna hook my right leg over my left. I'm gonna hold on my left hand onto the shoelaces of that right leg. Now I've created a triangle here in the middle. So I'm gonna reach through the triangle. You can either hook under the hamstring or you can even come to the shin. And then you're gonna relax your head and shoulders back towards the mat. Trying to relax your tailbone down also if possible. You should feel a stretch in this glute, 
piriformis, you can hook under the hamstring, or you can hook through to the shin. If you can't feel it, maybe pull this up a little bit higher. This is done quite well if you put your foot against a wall as well. I find that works really well, but for now we'll keep the routine simple. Just do it on the mat. Starting to slow your breathing down. side so I'm going to hook my left foot over my right knee I'm going to hold on with my right hand onto my left foot shoelaces I've created that triangle in the center so I'm going to reach through either grab around the shin or under the hamstring relax the head and shoulders back to the mat trying to relax the tailbone down feeling that stretch on the left glute or piriformis Now we're in the stretch, let's start relaxing the breathing down. Let's take one more breath. Okay, we're gonna go into an adductor stretch now. That's down the inside here. So you're gonna come lengthways across your mat. You're gonna go nice and wide with your knees. I personally like to tuck my, tail, my toes under, but if you prefer to point them, that's fine. I'm gonna push off the ground, sitting back on towards my heels like this. I'm gonna try and Keep my back relatively flat, crawl my fingertips away, drop my chest down so I'm getting a little bit of lats. I'm also staying in that adductor stretch. So I'm sinking my hips down between my heels. I've crawled my fingertips away and I'm relaxing my chest down towards the floor. So I'm opening out the upper back, getting the lats reaching but still sitting into that adductor stretch. Let's crawl your hands round to the left side. Crawl that right arm out and lean into that lat. So we should be getting a stretch down the right side of your body, creating an arc. Walking it over to the right side. Reaching that left hand out and then leaning, creating an arc down that left side. All right, let's take it onto the hamstrings now. So we're going to come back into a kneeling position. You're going to walk this heel forwards. Now, I don't want you to lock the knee out. We need to keep it slightly unlocked. A lot of the stretch sensation you feel is just that sciatic nerve on the back. So we want to actually unlock that. And then we're going to shift your hips backwards. And you'll feel these hamstrings up here a little bit more, especially with that knee unlocked. So nice little tip for hamstring stretches. It doesn't all have to be done with a straight leg. So I'm just scooting my hips back, leaning forwards. It might not look like I've gone very far probably because I haven't, but I can feel my hamstring reaching its full length. So that's fine. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You want to do it by feeling the hamstring. Now I'm here, I'm actually going to work in and out, just bending and straightening. I'm going to straighten out, feel the hamstrings that cross this joint a little bit more. And actually when I bend into it, I can feel them up here. If you want to stay upright, you could always use your roller. Just working in and out, 
I'm trying to, even when I'm lunging forwards, I'm trying to keep the tension down the hamstring. Just move it back and forth. And then let's move into that slightly stretched out position. And then just relax. I'm trying not to round my back like this. I'm extending through, keeping a nice long spine. All right, let's come to the other side. So I'm just gonna scoop my hips back, letting my body fold forwards until I feel the stretch up here. Feel that nicely along the hamstring. Just gonna hold it, relaxing your breath. Let's add a little bit of movement in, back and forth. Coming into a slightly straightened position, scooting the hips back, folding forwards, but keeping a nice long spine. We're just gonna relax into this stretch. One more breath. Thanks so much for joining me for that. Let me know in the comments, how did you find that routine and where in the world are you doing the routine from? Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. Give the video a like. Make sure you subscribe. Check out my mobility playlist for more foam roll and flexibility follow-alongs. Hopefully, see you again soon for another video.